Hi friends, my name is Atur and I welcome you all on my new video on Types of Tool Failure In this topic, I have gathered notes or data from P.N. Rao, Hazra Chaudhary, Boothroyd and at last notes from NPTEL Okay, and also I want to tell you that guys I am a working manufacturing engineer in a reputed company With my knowledge and data from the books, I have compiled this video and if you are going through this video till the end, I assure that 99% of your questions from the exam you will be able to solve it correctly. Okay, without taking much time, I will just go to the next slide and I will explain you in detail for this topic. Guys, here quickly we will revise the different parts of the cutting tool. Okay this is the shank and in actual tool you can see like this body which is called as a tool holder or a shank thing is like that it supports the cutting tool shank which holds the tool body in machine okay this is going to be connected to the machine okay so that is important of the shank Face, face is that part of the tool over which chips slides okay like this direction over which chips slides like this directions the plank plank is that face or is that part of the tool body which is very adjacent to the cutting edge suppose this is the cutting edge then this face is called as the flank here in this this face is the color flank and this face is also called as the flank or the clearance face you can see like that the next one is the tip or the nose radius every cutting tool or every single point cutting tool will have the same every tool will have the some uh, radius at the tool tip point which is ranging from 0.2 to uh, to 1.2 what is mean by the tool failure when we say our tool is got failed when the tool stops the working satisfactorily then we call it as a tool got failed it stops uh, working satisfactorily means Suppose chatter marks are increased, power in cutting power increased, cutting forces increased, or not producing the desired surface finish, or surface finish got increased, then we will say our tool is got failed. Okay, there are some reasons to get tool failure. These are mainly two reasons. One is the gradual wear and uh, Another one is the abnormal failure of the tool. The gradual wear that includes the corner wear of the tool, crater wear of the tool and flank wear of the tool. And in abnormal failure, the chipping of the tool and plastic deformation of the tool. In mostly, we will be study in detail these one because these are the we can predict. Okay. And these we can't predict. So, there is no importance to study them in detail. So, we will start with this one. So the first one is the corner wear. As you see, this is the this is having some corner radius. Okay, if you can see in the three D model, this is having some corner radius. It will got wear by use prolonged use of the tool. That is a gradual wear only. So what will be the effect of the that wear on the cutting action of the tool? You may be knowing that suppose the, that corner radius got increased the cutting force will also get increased but subsequently the surface finish produced will be a good surface finish you may be knowing these things suppose we with the same with the same feed rate if you are going like this it's we will be producing the this much height of this much height of uh, peaks in the surface but once your tool got rough or tool got blunt then suppose then suppose it will be like this it will got reduced as corner radius got reduced but as corner radius get reduced means the length will get reduced it will be producing dimensionally inaccurate surfaces that is not desired from the cutting tool this is from all from the corner wear okay then comes the crater wear crater wear forms at the tool chip interface this is the red face over which the chips are flowing okay so usually it is at some distance from the tool tip point you see there is some gap between the 
tool tip and the crater here this may be because suppose this is our tool and this is a cutting action sorry and the chips will be going flowing like this this is the high friction point or high pressure point of the chips and this is called as a crater wear mainly this forms in the ductile material this is because for the crater wheels to form the chips should be flowing all over the rake face continuously then and then only it will crater will form and this is of small concern because it's not altering any dimensions or it is not affecting in the work piece so people usually don't bother about the crater wear but usually the crater wear improves the cutting action how suppose this is your rake face it is increasing your angle suppose this is the crater then it is increasing the your rake face or rake angle that means it is reducing the cutting force that means reducing the power consumption so that is all for the crater wear then the next one is the plank wear usually plank wear occurs on the plank due to the rubbing action between the machined work piece and in the tool and usually it plank wear affects the great extent on the mechanics of the cutting i will explain you why but before that we'll study some points what i mentioned here when it occurs while machining the brittle material or forming the discontinuous chips okay and or we can measure the plank wear yes we can measure more accurately with brineal microscope okay so what is the mechanics of plank wear in the cutting so in this graph i have mentioned the cutting time in minute and plank wear in mm i will explain you at the start of the cutting action it will be a, a rapid wear because the rubbing action will be more but after some time it will get the surface rubbed and weared out and then it will start constant wear okay the first area of this area is called break in area the second area where the second area where the wear rate is constant which is insensitive to the temperature also that this is this area in this third region 2 to 3 where as prolonged action of rubbing and uh, as prolonged action of rubbing there will be a friction and because of that friction the temperature will get rise okay so what will happen as long as we are cutting the tool will fail catastrophically okay this is in the, this third region so what is the most useful region for us is the 1 to 2 so what are the effect of plank wear usually it creates a dimensionally inaccurate surface if you see earlier also i mentioned when the tool nose radius got wear then how it affects the dimensions of the part produced the same way here also if plank got wear then it will also produce the dimensionally inaccurate you see here i mentioned everything is in below figure okay because it producing dimensionally inaccurate parts the our process will be instable and as there is a rubbing action between the tool and machined work piece it will produce the poor surface finish okay so this all the from blank wear so here the next comes abnormal failure or chipping or mechanical breakage when it happens firstly because of excessive load of the chip on the tool when the excess load of the chip comes on the tool that is when we are using too fast feed or the too deep cut it may be because of intermittent heating and cooling of the tool this may be because of your cutting fluid is not reaching the cutting surface of the tool constantly third one interrupted cutting this may be because of abrupt change in cross section or tool is entering and leaving the work 
like in the milling all from chipping how the tool is getting chipped out or how the mechanical breakage is happening in the tool the next comes in the tool failure the plastic deformation of the tool for the plastic deformation suppose this is the tool okay and the temperature is getting generated over this area because of this it will lose its hardness and it will get softens okay we call the hot hardness of the tool get will get reduced because of that and prolonged action of the cutting force it will material will get physically deformed it will be like this deformation will occur in the tool this is also undesired tool failure in the cutting okay thank you guys